That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about The Perfect Find, the sophomore film directed by Numa Perrier, which just won the Audience Award at the 2023 Tribeca Film Festival. It is being released on Netflix June 23rd, 2023. Do you know Numa's first film? Jezebel uh, from 2019. I have not seen it. Sounds very interesting. This film is based on a book. Yes, by Tia Williams from 2016. And it's uh, adapted by Lee Davenport, whose last feature was Wendy Williams, the movie. Oh, okay. The story, after a high-profile firing, Jenna's fashion career comeback hits a snag when she falls for a charming, much younger co-worker who happens to be her boss's son. As sparks fly, Jenna must decide if she'll risk it all on a secret romance. Jenna's played by Gabrielle Union. Mm -hmm. Her character is supposed to be a 40-year-old woman who just got out of a very high-profile relationship that lasted 10 years. And was fired as a fashion editor from a very notable outlet. So we find her living with her mother, played by Janet Hubert, as she's been basically like in a slump for a year when her mom convinces her to get up and get back to it. So Jenna moves back to New York and asks for a job from her arch nemesis, played by Gina Torres. Darcy. Darcy. <laughs> who I think is my favorite part of the movie. Yeah. But Darcy, I mean, it's very like Amanda Priestley, Vanessa Williams, and Ugly Betty. She runs this subscription fashion thing. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's called Darzine. Mm -hmm. And Jenna is hired as the creative director. Yeah, just she walks in off the street and gets that job. So the night of her getting the job, she goes out to celebrate with her two best friends, played by Lala Anthony. Mm -hmm. And Aisha Hines. Who I also enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And while they're at this like party lounge place, she meets a guy named Eric, played by... Keith Powers. And he looks like maybe he's 25, and he says he just graduated from USC with a master's degree in film history. So they're attracted to each other, but it's like, well, you're too young for me. They have like a very mild makeout session in my eyes. She tells him she loves him. Yeah. Which I thought was so weird. But then there's like a mishap because she kind of slips and falls, but it's not that dramatic. She just kind of slips and then she realizes like, oh, I need to go. She gets to work and her boss Darcy walks in and says to Jenna, I want to introduce you to our new photographer. Videographer. Videographer. And it's Eric, who's also Darcy's son. So, of course, there's that awkward rom-com exchange. Well, we also have mentioned that Darcy and Jenna have a significant history uh, as each other's nemesis. And uh, what's his name? Brian? Uh, the man... Jenna's previous romance yeah the man jenna was in a relationship with apparently darcy thought that was her boyfriend that's not very well attenuated mm -hmm. but, but but there's a history there but immediately Dar jenna and eric have this really weird like conflict immediately which i didn't it didn't really work for me but they do decide to be professional but they're also having sex and i guess the main plot point is that it's expected that Jenna come up with this bright idea to boost business for Darzine. So she, so Jenna and Eric come up with this idea to do like old Hollywood looks. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of time spent on these photo shoots that we can talk about, but it's a success. And it seems like Jenna and Eric want to be together, but then there's a situation where Jenna sees Eric with his old girlfriend and Eric sees Jenna with her old boyfriend. So there's a misunderstanding and they seem to sort of drift apart. But then Jenna goes to apologize to Eric who lives at his mama's house. This drifting apart business is like a, a 24 hour period, by the way. Yeah. It, <laughs> anyway, we could get to it. Mm -hmm. But Jenna shows up. She breaks into Darcy's penthouse to go see Eric. Who's working from home that day. Mm hmm. And they have sex, like, in the middle of this penthouse, as if Dar Darcy's never going to come home. Uh -huh. But of course she does. Uh -huh. Catches them. Tells Jenna she's fired and stay away from her son. And then we fast forward a period. And we see Jenna's kind of moved on. She's now, like, teaching fashion at a college. And she has 
arranged a meeting with Eric, like at a restaurant. And when Eric shows up, she hands him a picture of an ultrasound and says, I'm pregnant, you're the dad. That does not go well. So then Darcy shows up at Jenna's apartment talking about, I'm not going to do you like Eric's dad's family did me, like abandoned me, hated me. And Eric grew up without a dad because the dad died. So she says, we're family now. And the final scene of the movie, after we see Eric show up at one of Jenna's prenatal appointments, is there's also this plot point of like Dar like Darzine Magazine hosts like the Met Gala, but it's called the Darcy Gala. Uh -huh. And then we see Jen and Eric together with her being pregnant and they seem happy. And the final line Jenna says is... She's found the perfect find or something to that degree. Yeah. Um, there are things I liked about this yes. movie, but I didn't care for it. I didn't... It It's fine. It's a very... It, there's nothing kind of spectacular about it, but it, it goes down easy enough. To me, this seems as ridiculous as that Reese Witherspoon, Ashton Kutcher rom-com. What is that called? Your Place or Mine. Uh, this is better than that. To, I to don't me. know. I mean, I'm going to give this a slightly higher score than that one because in that movie... I didn't like any of the characters. Yeah, see, this, in this movie, there are characters I like. Yeah, the supporting cast I think is is quite bright and fun. There's a really good soundtrack. Um, that you made a funny comment by the time we get to the Darcy Gala is if they'd spent a little less money on the soundtrack and a little more on the production design. The production quality is questionable, I think, particularly with the gala and the photo shoots for this old Hollywood thing, which we can talk about. But should I just start with my notes? Yeah, let's do it. I thought we were off to a good start because Janet Uber is. I just love her and everything I see her in. And I think she's super cute as, and she looks fantastic she does, yeah. as Jenna's mom. And when we see Jenna in her childhood bedroom, because she's supposed to be a 40 year old woman, we see that she has a bunch of Janet Jackson posters. So we were off to a good start. Well, like, and of the early albums. Yeah, yeah. Then the reason Jenna leaves her mom's house is because her mom says, Your dad won't have sex with me because he knows you're home. And he, you'll hear. So please So you need to goes, go. Please leave. <laughs> So that was a good start, but then Jenna, like, it seems like she's down and out and has lost everything, but then somehow she moves to New York and gets a fabulous apartment, and it, I mean, it's without a job. So it's like, wow, you must have had a lot of money saved up, I guess. And then it's not, it, it my biggest issue is this story feels like it should have been a, like a TV series. Mm -hmm. Like, we needed many moments with these characters to understand them. I don't understand Jenna. I don't understand... The relationship between her and Eric. She needs that Carrie Bradshaw kind of space, I think, to, to navigate all of her her business. You don't agree, but this felt very, like, YA to me. If it weren't for the fact that it's supposed to be a 40-year-old woman, this could be, like... Uh, what's that series with the, like, Diary of a Wimpy Kid? Mm -hmm. I've seen some of those when I worked in the school. I mean, this could have been like that. <laughs> <laughs> to me. I don't think... Not YA. This felt like kind of that uh, women's pulp fiction that you'd read on a plane or on a summer vacation. It's rated MA because we get two scenes where oral sex is kind of simulated. I mean, it's not very... It's not It's not that adult. No, it's not adult, but I... Um, but, you know, because they're simulating oral sex. And then there is some language. But now, one of the characters I really liked, um, who is a rapper... Carlita? Carlita. Mm -hmm. Her uh, rap name is what? Jungle Pussy. Jungle Pussy. Uh, Shana McHale <laughs> is her actual name. In the film, I think the adult language moments are because someone uses the word pussy a couple times. Mm -hmm. But then now that I know that one of the actors, their stage name is actually Jungle Pussy, mm -hmm. it makes me laugh. Mm -hmm. Who's giving me kind of Lala Milan vibes. Yeah, she was a lot of she fun. She seemed fun. Yeah. I would like to see her in more things. Okay, Gina Torres as Darcy is so fun. Yeah. Because her attitude, like, she's kind of vile towards Jenna, which is fun. And then she has these moments where she speaks in Spanish randomly, which I thought was funny. And her fashions, they're oh, pretty yes. camp. Yes, they are. And she's got this fantastic mane of hair. Oh, her hair looks so amazing. Mm -hmm. Immediate, you know, have you ever seen I Think I Love My Wife? No. She plays Chris Rock's wife. She's very good in that. I thought. Yeah. Darcy is amazing. Um, there are some fun cameos because we have um, 
T.S. Madison. T.S. Madison. Who is giving me Florida Evans esterol. <laughs> but her scene is funny because the first job Jenna and Eric do is like to do like a video profile on this fashion entity mm-hmm. and it's T.S. Madison. It's not clear to me what she is. Yeah. But when they show up to her house, she's like grieving, like mourning the loss of her dead peacock named Taraji P. Henson. Which it takes a while to... Are you talking about the Taraji? Yeah, it takes a while yeah. to figure out what she's talking about, but I thought that was a real And she's fun swinging scene. this cane around, yeah. Okay. Immediately when Jenna and Eric like are at work now, their their relationship goes from like, I didn't even know you. I met you like last night and I kissed you at a party to now we work together in this awkward dynamic. But it doesn't have to be that awkward. And they're like, they seem... They're exchanging barbs that... Uh, and it I seemed unnecessary. It seemed unnecessary or if that was a way that now that we realize the awkwardness of our relationship, we have to distance each each other. Like, I, I feel like she starts because right away her hackles are up. and Well, then she keeps commenting on how he's young and a kid, so then he's talking about how she's old. And that, I don't know, it, it felt unnecessary mm-hmm. and uncomfortable and didn't make me, I don't know, like I just never, not in... Not even after the movie ended did I feel like these two people had a connection. Besides, they're both attractive, so then... Well, they bond over film. So she, uh, behind her desk, which looks like it's in the front lobby, really, but uh, she puts up a picture of Nina Mae McKinney from King Vidor's film Hallelujah, which is the first all-black cast. We're introduced to uh, Nina uh, as a Hollywood fixture known as the Black Garbo. And, uh, and then that's what she gets the idea to do this old Hollywood film shoot another inter while well, speaking of the hollywood shoot another interesting cameo is remy ma mm-hmm. so would they have this idea to the old hollywood photo shoot uh which i think the premise of it is fun like mm-hmm. oh every time people watch old hollywood films they always see pieces of fashion that they wish they could get now so let's do that so i was expecting something very glamorous gowns by adrian like joan crawford or someone sitting in their bedroom with this fabulous house dress on and then we get Remy Ma dressed like Carmen, like Carmen Jones. I think I think they were, that was a Dorothy Dandridge reference, but and then, and then we get subsequent scenes with like this these photo shoots happening, and none of it felt very fashion to me. It, it doesn't, and that what's in who's inserted there is Lee Davenport, the uh, screenwriter, is Aretha, and uh, as Pearl Bailey is the director, Numa Perrier. Then when we see the finished product, I thought that looked like. I didn't, it didn't look professional. I didn't so mind the finish. It, it almost was shot like the opening montage of a television series. Kind of. Like I, I, I could picture Loretta Devine singing over it. Uh, I just think that for the amount of time we spend on this and their work together. Because they, Darcy keeps talking about how they're doing such a jo- good job with their work together. And it's like, I don't even understand what they're doing. They're just taking pictures. We get a scene of like... Gabrielle Union showing one of the models like to take an umbrella and shoot it like a machine gun. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't understand what that was supposed to be. Um, I thought that was black exploitation reference, but uh, it, I, yeah, I'm unclear about what the work is and what exactly it. Uh, the deadline is like ninety days to create something, and the the mo- the old Hollywood montage wouldn't seem so bad except if it wasn't followed by this count of subscriber numbers going up. Yeah, when we see the finished product, then we... Also, I don't know. The set design was odd to me. Like, I feel like it's supposed to feel... I'm sure if I read the book, the author would have done a very good job creating this world, like Darzeen. And, but I think in the film, it just seems kind of weird. Like, all of the conference rooms have, like, different colors, and it looks a little, like... Mm. Like a, a rock-hewn vagina. Then when we get the scene where Darzeen sees the finished product and it's put, I guess, on the internet because it's like Darzeen's seeing the finished product for the first time, but it's also been, it's, it's been pushed live. So then we see the subscriber count show up on a screen. That looked real. It just feels like, like a cartoon, like something for kids to me. Mm-hmm. Another interesting cameo is now that Eric and Jenna are like supposed to be dating on the low... They're at a drive-in watching, I guess it's supposed to be like a bootleg version of Dreamgirls. And it's raining. The windows are all like covered in rain and foggy. Mm -hmm. And then Winnie Harlow shows up. Mm -hmm. Playing a model. Who's playing a model, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. But but she like walks by the car and sees 
Jenna. Don't know how she saw it through this dark rain covered window. And she goes, oh my God. Oh my God, it's Eric. I know you. And then she's saying like, well, did you know Jenna like discovered me and thanks to her, I'm who I am today. And then she realizes, oh, you two are a couple. And then Jenna and Eric freak out mm -hmm. because they're like, she's going to tell everyone. Mm -hmm. But then that doesn't go anywhere. It's just the next scene is Darcy confronting Jenna saying, don't like sleep with my son. But I was expecting the following scene to be like in all the tabloids and on TikTok and Instagram, we see Jenna and Eric are a couple now. But we don't get that. Again, this feels like it should have been a TV series. Mm -hmm. So we could, because I think that the whole like work project and her having 90 days, that would make a great first season storyline mm -hmm. of like she's working through building up to this big, you know, launch. Yes, because I, I think what we're lacking is uh, some interiority for Jenna Jones, which makes her actions seem kind of adolescent and out of left field sometimes. I don't quite understand how she's in love with this person uh, to the degree where she will sacrifice her newly uh, reseeded career. Especially when you just lost your career. Like very high profile, embarrassing situation with a man and your career. Mm -hmm. Then you jump into this again. And and again, it's not about the keeping it, I can understand all of that, keeping it secret. It's just, you know, she acts insanely jealous when accidentally his ex-girlfriend, who looks like a little girl. I mean, what, what are you so jealous about? I just don't, like, in the book, is Jenna supposed to be so unreasonable? She's really acting like a high school girl. Mm -hmm. And I just found it very unappealing. I also didn't quite understand where they were going with the styling for Gabrielle Union because they give her this very, I thought it looked very severe on her hair and almost any other time that they uh, change it up a little bit, softens her up immediately. I mean, I Gabrielle Union is obviously stunning, yeah. but I don't like her hair for most of the movie because she has this concentrated bob with a center part and it's obviously a weave, so then it looks like the McDonald's arches. And then her fashion is very frumpy, but she's supposed to be like a fashion maven. Mm -hmm. It just, it's weird. And then, yeah, like there are moments when she does look different and I don't know why they didn't just stick with that. I like when she, she hosts a party at her apartment and Godfrey shows up as a cameo because, uh, one a friend's of, setting her up. Yeah. And, and he's a, a age appropriate. Right. And of course she ends up not really liking him. I think, <laughs> I feel like maybe Gabrielle Union was miscast in this role. I think she's a little too fabulous and maybe they're trying to like I think you, do an Ugly Betty situation. Like again, I didn't read the book. I don't know. I feel like I was thinking Rada Blank. Sure. From 40-year-old from version. Old version. She would have been fun because she seems like a 40-year-old woman, but she also is very vibrant and has a lot of um, pizzazz. And so I could see a younger man being into her and her not really... But again, I don't know if in the book Jenna's supposed to be this fabulous woman. Because then if that's the case, I also don't feel like that was well done in this movie. Well, because it's just like, God, you seem so put together in so many ways. But again, the, I, not that there can't be the, that kind of dichotomy in a person. It's just that I don't... I, I wanted to see a little more of how we're, she's navigating that or explaining that, even to herself, about how she acted this way in certain scenarios. The scene where Jenna sees her ex is the ex has been trying to get in contact with her for the year that they haven't been together, but she's ignoring him. And then one day he shows up at her doorstep, like in the rain, and she's kind of like, I'm scared, like, what are you doing here? And he says, well, my mom just died. So she goes, I'm sorry, gives him a hug, and that's when Eric's watching. So all he sees is them hug, and then she walks away with him. And they get into a car. I don't. I didn't, couldn't tell whose car it was. She said, she said I'm going to drive. So I guess he was too drunk to drive or something. But she drives this car, and he lives in this amazing, like, high-rise building. And she just parks the car, or the car is just parked right in front of the building. Like, somewhere certainly it can't stay. He goes inside and she has an, like an Uber shows up without mm -hmm. her. Like we never see her. I don't know. That scene felt so weird. And all it does is demonstrate that she doesn't want the life she had with him anymore. Yes. But was he offering that up? Like they were already. <laughs> but it, it had such a cliche mistake of uh, a comedy of errors, right? Like what is, 
Eric interpreting that he sees and what is she inter like the, the, the communication needs to be I, I, as a 40 year old woman I would think that her she would, has learned that she needs to communicate and this this young man they've been trying to call each other all day and he's just I'm just gonna show up and then see something I I didn't think I wanted to see it's just like I don't know lastly the gala which is what ends the film that we've been building up to since we met Darcy that looked I mean it just looks chintzy a I bit. wasn't very impressed but again there were some things I did like as a rom-com this doesn't work for me because I don't believe the relationship between Eric and Jenna I don't see the chemistry I'm not rooting for them for as the audience this shit does not make sense to me you two should not be interacting it's unprofessional it's not gonna go well the scene where she tells him that she's pregnant is another example of her being so like immature. She's I don't like your reaction right now. It's like, well, could you give him a minute? Hun, could we stopped talking minute? and then you just call me here and then before you even ask me how I'm doing, you hand me an ultrasound image. I mean, come on. How am I supposed to react? But like so as a rom com it doesn't work. As a comedy, I mean, there are funny moments. Yeah. But for it's sure. not from the two leads. Not really, no. So, and, and I think that's the problem. Is because what did we keep thinking of? Something recent, like something from something from Tiffany's with the guy from Insecure. I like that movie. Like, like because even though that's a really cheesy film, it's like you are led to want these two people to. Connect. I wanted them to be together. Mm -hmm. I felt like they were cute together, and they both deserved each other. Yeah, this one is like nothing about this makes sense. I'm not rooting for them. Mm -mm. But anyway, what would you give this movie? Um, you didn't want to talk more about the soundtrack. Oh, well, so th the soundtrack is very impressive. It opens with Billie Holiday. There's some SWV yeah. in there, some Aretha. Tisha Campbell. Uh, I think there's some Bruno Mars in there. It's really good. But I also found it distracting. Because, like, yeah. I mean, there are scenes, like, like I think the first time Eric performs oral sex on Jenna, like the SWV Week song is playing. <laughs> yeah. That felt like a mismatch that took me out of whatever was happening. Then the score... There are moments when it feels like... <laughs> it's trying hard. We're leading us into comedy here, and it's like, well... Yeah. Maybe. That's all I have to say. Sure. Uh, but uh, shout out again to uh, Leah Daniels Butler, who's the casting director. Yeah, good for her. Now she's, that staying, I... <laughs> she's staying busy. Yeah, she is. Yeah, now that we know who she is. <laughs> what would you give this movie? Uh, two and a half. I would give it two out of five. I'm sorry. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. Oh, 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 o